Today's lesson is going to be a whirlwind trip through radiant energy in the electromagnetic spectrum. And like I said, we're going to move fast, but I encourage you to spend some time and search on the internet and look at some of the uh, information you see here, especially on the different types of radiation, uh, because it's kind of neat what people are using this radiation for and like kind of what we've been doing with it since our technology has improved. But we're just going to whip through this really quickly. I said we're talking about radiant energy and electromagnetic spectrum. A rainbow is a familiar example of a spectrum. Raindrops separate white light from the sun into the various colors. Visible light, however, is just one type of electromagnetic energy that comes from the sun. Okay. Electromagnetic energy travels in waves. Wavelengths are usually measured from crest to crest. So what is the wavelength of the above wave? Well, like I said, you can measure it crest to crest like they do here. Okay. You can measure it trough to trough, here to here. You can measure it from one part of the wave to the same part of the next wave. It doesn't matter where you measure it from. This one is about six and a half units for its wavelength. We're going to find that the electromagnetic spectrum arranges waves according to wavelength. Okay, so it arranges them according to wavelength. So here you see the complete electromagnetic spectrum. What has the shortest wavelength? Okay, it's over here, gamma rays. Okay, so gamma rays are the shortest waves. You can see in the picture here, really, really short wavelengths. Longest wavelengths, those are radio waves. Okay, you can see up here, very, very long waves. And all the other types are going to fit in between. Like I said, we're just going to go through each of these types really quickly. And I definitely encourage you to do a little bit of research on your own because we are doing some cool things with a lot of these waves. And I'll touch on it in some of these different cases. Um, notice that visible light is only a small part of the spectrum. Okay, visible light is just this little portion right here. Okay, visible light is a very small part of the spectrum. So we are not sensitive, uh, at least our eyes are not sensitive to a lot of these other parts. Um, some animals are. Some birds and bats can see in ultraviolet. Some snakes and stuff can see in infrared. Um, humans, though, our eyes are very sensitive uh, to only the visible light. Uh, I put this down here. You might not be able to read this chart on your note sheet. Uh, if you can't, you can just fill it in. This first box says radio waves. Second one, microwaves. Third one, infrared. Then you see the visible spectrum. Okay, so visible is in here. And the other colors, then ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And I like this picture here just because it reminds me of the huge size difference in these waves. And you can say the wavelength is in meters here. So radio waves are about a meter long. Okay? So think of the waves that are going through the are going to your radio antenna. They're going through the air, these big meter long waves, okay, cruising through. They're traveling at the speed of light, but they're a meter long. Microwaves, um, you know, a little bit smaller. That's 10 to the negative 2. We're going to the visible light, 10 to the negative 6. We get the gamma rays, we're talking 10 to the negative 12th meters. Okay, they're smaller than your cells, which is why they're so dangerous. And we're going to talk about that with these, um, these ones here. When the waves get smaller than your cells, they tend to cause a little bit of damage. Um, so the harmful ones are the shorter wavelengths. I said, but we're going to talk to those, talk about those as we cruise through it here. So like I said, our whirlwind tour, we're starting with gamma rays. Gamma rays are the shortest waves, okay? So they're down here, okay? They're the shortest. Gamma rays go through most materials pretty easily. We can use them to kill bacteria in food and cancer cells. They're very dangerous, okay? You think of radiation burns. I didn't put any pictures of any uh, burns from nuclear bombs. Uh, you can certainly search, and if you want to see some nasty pictures of kind of flesh being burned off, you can see lots of radiation burn pictures if you want. Um, radiation, this gamma rays are extremely dangerous. Like I said, one good use, um, we now have like gamma knives, I think what they called. And we use them for killing cancers in brains. Okay, So they, if you have brain cancer, they may strap you into this big chair, they put this big dome thing over top of you, they have this cobalt, and they can focus the gamma rays to a very, very, very tiny point inside of your brain and basically just 
fry um, the cancer. Um, it's pretty interesting what they can do now with gamma rays. So incredibly dangerous, but if you harness them correctly, they could be incredibly helpful. Moving a little bit shorter, we get to x-rays. Okay, so x-rays are the second shortest. Uh, they can pass through most materials. You know they can't go through lead and gold. Uh, because they go through lots of materials, it makes them very useful in medical field and also airport security. X-rays can kill living cells, so try to limit your exposure to them. Uh, think about it. Why do they put a lead vest on you when you go to the dentist? Well, it's to protect the rest of your body. Make sure it doesn't sterilize you so you can have children in the future. Um, you think about the dentist or the dental hygienist. Where do they go when they take the x-rays of your teeth? They leave the room. Okay, Just a few x-rays a year doesn't matter that much to you. But if they're doing you know, 10 or 20 a day, um, that would increase their risk of damage. Uh, and they would definitely be developing cancer. Um, you think about... Um, kind of the famous person who figured out what x-rays were, Marie Curie. Um, and she eventually died from cancer from the x-rays. She didn't know that they were harmful at that time. Moving on, the next shorter one are ultraviolet, or the next longer ultraviolet. They're just shorter than the color violet. So they're down here. Okay, the visible colors are coming up, and the visible color violet okay, would be right here, and ultraviolet are just shorter. Too much ultraviolet can cause sunburn, skin cancer, wrinkles, cataracts. Okay, cataracts are cloudy spots in your eyes. Most UV rays don't make it through the atmosphere, but some do. So you want to wear sunglasses, use sunscreen, long sleeves. Um, you want to definitely protect yourself from the UV rays. Uh, UV rays can be good. They're used to kill bacteria, and skin cells produce vitamin D when exposed to them. So we can absorb calcium. So we do need some UV rays um, to be healthy. Like I said, we can use them. I might have, you might have seen them with maybe an electric shaver or in a hair salon for combs where they'll use UV rays to uh, sterilize things. Um, in hospitals, they have some robots that go around at some hospitals and they, they shine UV lights and sterilize rooms to kill all the bacteria so it's not passed on patient to patient. Um, this, is a, this is a picture of the sun, uh, a UV picture of the sun. You can see it, it releases a lot of UV. A picture of Jupiter, visible light picture, and then ultraviolet. You can see these auroras, um, bright ultraviolet. And sun tanning booze, not very good for your skin. Uh, infrared, we're skipping visible light. We're going to come back to visible light. Uh, infrared, though, are just longer than the visible light red. Okay, So visible light red is here. Infrared are just a little bit longer. You probably know them as heat. So you can see an infrared picture of this dog. You see the hot areas that basically aren't fur covered. The fur is insulating them. Uh, so you can see the ears and the, the hotter spots. Um, and uh, another galaxy picture showing you the hotter spots. Picture of a person. Okay, seeing that how you can kind of see through objects by using heat. You might have seen this in movies like Predator or the Thomas Crown Affair, where they're basically using infrared cameras and they can see through walls or see through cars and actually see the people hiding inside because you're seeing the heat, the infrared waves. Um, your television remote control also uses infrared um, too, but a little bit longer type of infrared, so not the heat version. It's more like a microwave. Speaking of microwaves, we get to microwaves. They're the second longest. Cell phones use microwaves to transfer information, also communicate with satellites, and police use them for radar guns. Uh, and of course, we use them to heat food in microwave ovens. Okay, the microwaves go down; they vibrate dipolar particle particles uh, like water molecules, and they cause them to vibrate really fast and make heat. Um, you can see microwaves here. Um, another thing is kind of cool to look up. You can see videos on this microwave guns. Uh, military and also different police forces, like in LA, have microwave guns where they can shoot protesters with these guns and it's incredibly painful. It heats your skin to 130 degrees Fahrenheit um, and people leave. They run away. Okay, Reflexively they get away. So it's a non-lethal um, weapon. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, you said you watched some videos on that. It's pretty amazing um, watching tests of this where people of course had to test to see if it worked. Then we get to the longest ones which are radio waves. Of course we use them to broadcast radio programs. And they are the longest. You see big radio antennas 
like this, and much more of the ways we search for extraterrestrial life. And of course, your you know the radio from your uh, for your radio stations. We get through radio waves. Uh, this this map just shows you kind of where these radio waves or what how they get blocked in the atmosphere. Some radio waves, of course, make it all the way to the ground. That's why we can use the radio telescopes. And you might hear cracks and pop pops and stuff on your radio. Those are radio waves from space. Microwaves, a few make it. Infrared, of course, some make it. Heat, visible light, of course, makes it. And we can see UV. You know, some make it. A and B make it. UV C. Uh, a worse form is blocked by the atmosphere. And then X-rays and gamma rays are blocked by the atmosphere, of course, um, which is good for us. Um, think about uh, astronauts in space that are above this. They are in danger of, of, of these rays. Okay, They're getting extra radiation, and it can build up um, over a lifetime if an astronaut would stay up in space for a long time. Um, going on a trip to Mars, you might be exposed to lots of radiation. Even frequent flyers or flight attendants that are flying you know, every week or every day a week are actually have higher levels, and a lot of airlines don't allow uh, pregnant flight attendants to fly anymore because that can damage, um, cause birth defects with the baby. Because so even flight attendants are at a greater risk because they're up um, and getting more, more of these radiation, to gamma waves. But we skip the middle section, visible light section. So that's what we're going to talk about in this section. And we're going to be playing around with this um, tomorrow in class. You're going to be using a spectroscope. A spectroscope is this device here. Okay, it's an instrument that separates visible light into its various wavelengths. So basically what you're going to do is you are going to look through one end, the smaller end here, and point, there's a little open slit that you'll point at a light source, and you're going to see pretty colors. Those pretty colors will tell you something about um, what you're looking at. Okay. Um, each wavelength of light has a different color. What color is the longest? Okay. Longest color is red. Okay. So red over here, longest color. Shortest, that is violet. Okay. And then all the other colors fit in between. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Okay, make sure that you know your colors in order. Red being the longest, to violet being the shortest. White light consists of all the wavelengths. Okay, so all those colors put together make white. Different than pigments in art class. You mix all the colors together in art class with pigments, you're not going to get white. Okay, that's different. Light, you mix all those colors together, and we'll probably do this in class also, and you'll get white. So when you look at a white light through a spectroscope, you're going to see the full spectrum like you see up here. Okay. Hot gases produce light waves with only particular wavelengths. So you can only see, you only see certain colors through the spectroscope. Also, different gases make different colors. And their spectra are called line spectra. Okay. So line spectra is the spectrum that you see when you look at an object through a spectroscope. Okay. It's the colored lines that you're going to see when you look at an object through a spectroscope. Okay. Most likely you're not going to see the whole spectrum. Each element when heated emits energy at a specific wavelength. And we'll see various ones in class tomorrow. So for example, we'll see some of these tomorrow. If I light up some helium, which I'll do, okay, you look at it through a spectroscope, you don't see all the colors of the rainbow. You're only going to see these specific colors. Okay, these are line spectra. Okay, it's the specific colored lines you see when you look at an element that's heated okay, through a spectroscope. In calcium, you see these different ones. Hydrogen, you see these different ones. Each element is unique. It's kind of like a fingerprint. Okay, every one is unique. Uh, here are some of the elements found in stars. I said we'll look at maybe six or seven of these tomorrow. So why do we care what line spectra we see? There's a couple of reasons. First reason is, by looking through the spectroscope, scientists can determine what elements are in space looking for ones necessary for life. Okay? We can look at a planet 
and the sun, if there's a star behind it, that light will go through the planet's atmosphere, and we'll be able to see what elements are in that planet's atmosphere. M you know, then we can figure out maybe something could live there, or maybe we could go there. Okay, so we're looking for ones necessary for life. Uh, also, we can determine temperatures with spectroscopes and line spectra, and movement. We're going to talk about redshift and blue shift um, a little bit later. Um, with objects, with space objects. So we can figure out how things are changing and learn more about the evolution of the universe. Uh, the Big Bang Theory in particular because a lot of objects um, experience this this blue shift. Okay, moving away. And we'll get to more of that.